Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on testing a dependent variable for normality across all the levels of an independent variable. Oftentimes in counseling research, when we are working with inferential statistics, and in particular parametric inferential statistics, one of the assumptions of the data that needs to be met before running the statistic is that the dependent variable be normally distributed. And sometimes the assumption is that the dependent variable is normally distributed across all the levels of an independent variable. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, you can see I have three dependent variables here, anxiety, depression, and substance use, and one independent variable with three levels, zero, one, and two. And that's REBT, group CBT, and waiting list. Let's assume that we want to test the normality of these dependent variables. And first we'll test the normality of the variable without considering the levels of the independent variable. And we'll do that through analyze, descriptive statistics, explore, and then I'll move all three variables over to the dependent list list box. Under plots, I'll uncheck stem and leaf. I'm going to check off normality plots with tests. Click continue and then click OK. And we can see here we have 48 cases and no missing values. We move down here for the test of normality and of most interest to us in this case would be the p-value for the Shapiro-Wilk and you can see it is not statistically significant for anxiety, depression, or substance use. So the p-value is greater than 0.05 in all of these cases. So we would assume that these three variables are normally distributed. And when taking a look at the QQ plots, and again, this is still testing for normality, we're looking to see that these points match this line or are close to this line. In this case, looking at anxiety, you can see the, the points are fairly close to the line or on the line. Moving down to depression, uh, the same thing, a little more deviation here, uh, but generally close to the line. And then looking at substance use, you can see again some deviations uh, from the line, but most of the points are fairly close. It's worth noting in this particular case, looking at the substance use variable, that if we were to have interpreted the Kolmogorov Smirnoff test instead of the Shapiro Wilk, we would have found a statistically significant result and would have assumed that the substance use variable is not normally distributed. But before we run the test of normality, we decide whether we're going to interpret the Kolmogorov Smirnoff or the Shapiro-Wilk. And in most cases, I plan on interpreting the Shapiro-Wilk. So this analysis tested the normality of the three variables without considering the levels of the independent variable. But now I'm going to look at the distributions of anxiety, depression, and substance use across all three levels of the independent variable treatment. So REBT, group CBT, and the waiting list. There are a few ways that this can be done, but I think the easiest is to go to data and split file. And you can see it by default is set to analyze all cases, do not create groups. Move down to organize output by groups. And you can see here this list box becomes available, groups based on, I'm going to make it treatment. And I click OK. And you can see down here at the bottom, sort cases by treatment, split file, separate by treatment. I'm drawing attention to this because when you're done with this analysis, in most cases, you're going to want to remove the split file. So now it's active and we're going to go ahead and perform analyses and then I'm going to show you how to turn this off. So now we'll run the same analysis with the split file on. 
go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore, and you can see that it still has the dependent list, list box populated with the three variables, and it retains the settings under Plots, so I still have the normality plots with tests. So I click Continue there and then OK here. And now the results are divided by each level of the independent variable. You can see treatment equals REBT is the first tier. So I move down to the test or normality. This is just testing the values for anxiety, depression, and substance use that were associated with the first level of the independent variable, in this case, the REBT treatment group. And you can see again that we would plan to interpret Shapiro-Wilk, and here we have a non-statistically significant finding for anxiety and substance use, but for depression, we have a statistically significant finding. So we assume that the variables anxiety and substance use are normally distributed for the REBT level, and depression is not normally distributed for the REBT level. And just like the test of normality, the QQ plot is just for this level of the independent variable, and it's stated up here, treatment equals REBT. So again, we would look at the points for anxiety and for depression. You can see there's quite a deviation here and up here. And then for substance use. Again, a bit of a deviation, particularly toward the right side here. And then in a similar fashion to what we just did for REBT, we would take a look at group CBT. Again, interpreting these results, we can see we have three non-statistically significant results here. So we assume that anxiety, depression, substance use are all normally distributed in the group CBT level. Again, we have the QQ plots. And I'll move down to the last level, which would be the waiting list. I'll take a look at the test and normality here. And we can see that we have a non-statistically significant result for anxiety, for substance use, but we do have a statistically significant result for depression. So for the level waiting list, we would assume depression is not normally distributed, but anxiety and substance use are normally distributed. And of course here we have the QQ plots for all three variables for the treatment level of waiting list. Once we are completed testing for normality for each level of the independent variable, you want to make sure that you remove the split file unless you're going to continue to need it for further analyses, which would usually be an unlikely outcome. Usually you would want to remove the split file to continue on with analyzing data. So we'll go to data and then split file. And we don't have to remove this. We don't have to move this back to the list box here on the left. We can just hit analyze all cases, do not create groups, and click OK. And if we look at the very bottom of the output viewer, we can see split file off. You want to make sure you see that, split file off. So now any further data analyses that are performed will not produce output split by the three levels of the independent variable treatment. I hope you found this video on testing the normality of a dependent variable across all levels of an independent variable to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.